Team champion Chris Wakelin up against Joe O'Connor. Here's our MC, Phil Seymour. Thanks, Rachel. Good evening and a very warm welcome to day number three at the Bedford to Snooker Shootout here at the Swansea Arena. We begin with a finalist from last season's Scottish Open, Joe O'Connor, and the reigning and defending shootout champion, Chris Wakelin! Yeah, you won't hear Chris Wakelin saying a bad word about the shootout. As he said, it's transformed his whole career. He's already been, of course, in a final this season in Belfast. He would love to become the first player to win this on more than one occasion. Joe O'Connor is a tough opponent in any tournament. They know each other well, but uh, it's now going to be all business on the table. Lively in here this evening on this Friday night. So looking forward to the evening ahead. This is the usual lags to see who uh, has the choice of who breaks. Chris Wakelin closest to the cushion, and he's going to put Joe O'Connor in. Yeah, definitely lively in here tonight, as you point out. I think tonight could be the night when the, the shootout goes as per usual with crowds. It's not a full house, but it's a huge venue, but the few of them really getting into the spirit of the shootout. Don't hit the blue. You know, the last person did that. It was at the end of a... The 147 break yesterday, that's what Sean Murphy took as a consequence. It's hard to imagine anyone could retain this title, really, isn't it? I mean, you, I guess anything is possible. If you can win it once, I suppose you can win it twice, but you've got to have the luck and the skill. All combined in one. Joe O'Connor, I think, just happy to get through round one because it was the first match he'd ever won in the shootout. And this is his sixth appearance, so he's got that done now. Now it's about trying to press on, get through to finals day tomorrow. Yeah, that's a pretty good shot there. He's on the red that he wanted to be on, the one above the black. It opens up everything. Good early chance, this. Yeah, we saw him Six. about this time last year, wasn't it? At the Scottish Open in Edinburgh. Very impressive in getting to the final when Gary Wilson beat him. And then, of course, he got him in some of the big tournaments second half of the season. He got to the semis of the Players' Championship, which was full of top names. Hasn't quite hit the heights yet this season, but did qualify for York. Got to the UK Championship, John Higgins beating there. 14. Played that well, he easy get into that too much and hit the red bottom of the punch, but it's the one he played on and he's on it. So, a very encouraging start for Joe. 22. 29. Yeah, well, he's got two more loose reds. He's building a, a useful lead early in this frame. Yeah, I think he may be playing on the pink to the middle. It's certainly the easiest route onto the other red that they've mentioned. <laughs> Very measured player, isn't he? I thought that when he got to the final in Edinburgh last year, how well he played all the way through. 36. into the bunch of reds. I don't expect him to really go full into them in case he knocks one in. Yes. 
cube and glue to the side cushion, not as planned. No, and there's plenty of time, six and a half minutes. Got a good start, that, from Joe O'Connor. Joe O'Connor, 43. Remember, it goes down to 10 seconds a shot in the second five minutes of the match. Well, that shot is always on, and uh, that may have been a fluke, but of course they didn't get the keyboard back down the table, which he could have done with, actually. To get on the blue, which he can't do now. the red. Well, all things considered, there's plenty of time for this comeback to happen. And the balls are pretty nice as well. Uh, not an easy red now. This is a real tough queuing shot. I can't see he can refuse it. a slight predicament here. What does Joe O'Connor want to do now? Yeah, not go for one is the answer. Very much the ball is in Chris Wakelin's court to do something. How does he get back into the frame? How does he get a chance? O'Connor is on the defensive. Concern that red. Well, red could certainly make that be a big pocket to the left middle with the pink where it is. I think he's going to play this, you know, in directly or off the pink. Yeah, I mean you can see it was there. It was worth the risk. It was a danger to Joe O'Connor's shot. So every chance here, these reds are in play. The black available. Tight, didn't he? He's trying to pot it, but I don't think it was full pocket. There's a good chance. Yeah, I don't think that went very easily. Maybe half a pocket. Well, he took a risk there. He tried to lay the snooker on that red behind the pink. Could be a the end of the champion. go one last go here must pop one must 
get on the black and do something very quickly. It's now or never. What a shot, what a shot. So, a minute 15 left. Black is the ball, obviously, you want to be on at this stage for the points. Can he do it? Yeah, not letting the cue ball move very far there either. Well, I think he's on, you know. But position is the absolute key. 16. That's not bad. That's not bad. He can reach this. Mm, he's playing the other red. Wasted time there. Now, a massive shot positionally. Goodness me, this is, really is, this is happening. Two pots, isn't it? Two pots, he's getting the extension on. 14 seconds. Red and black needed. Oh, oh he misses the red. He misses the red, it was in his hands. Joe O'Connor delighted, it was out of his hands in the end. Chris Wakelin had time there to pop red and black. The red stayed out and the defending champion is out in an absolute thriller.